biggest ocean, the biggest passage, it's going to be forever and by Galapagos. That's right, this is the Galapagos. We've been here for like seven days and we have how many days at sea? We have anything between 17 to 25 days at sea. It's 3,000 nautical miles between here wow. and French Polynesia. It's definitely the biggest passage we've done. Yeah. Hope you enjoyed the journey with us. This episode on Sailing Mecca. One of the things we love about Passage is seeing dolphins. Just been joined by a big group of them. Some of them have been jumping in the air. Pretty cool. Another one, it's going crazy though. It's much bigger. It's amazing. I haven't lost them already. At least we've still got one that we've brought oh, it's tiring ashore. Up. It's up on the surface of <laughs> on the, the boat. It's a good sign. Let's kill it. Let's eat it. I want to run it tomorrow. And try and tire them out. Yeah. yeah. This is the one we got already. Get down there. He's pretty little. Oh, yeah. look at that! Jumping. He's fighting for his life. We've been wanting fish, haven't we? Morning. The princess awakens. She's been on night watch about 3 a.m. It's only 10 o'clock, Naomi. It's a bit early. We've caught another fish. Way bigger. Going a bit crazy here on the boat. Are you? We're looking forward to fish. We haven't had it in days. I'm so excited. But we've got new lures now and they're much better. So we've got to we're hungry for fish. <laughs> we're always fishing. Sugar's realised we've been fishing. He's a big fishy. Does it smell good? Coco wants in on the action. We're doing uh, we're doing pretty good with the power on this trip because we've got our hydro generator. So it generates quite a lot of power. As long as we're going about seven knots, it's generating about 10 amps all through the night, which is about half of our power usage. So the batteries don't go down too much. And then during the day we've got all our solar and so then we're making about 15 amps positive um, recharges the batteries we have to put on our generator or our motor for a, maybe an hour or so each day but other than that it's great i'm hand steering because a bolt has sheared off the one that joins our two rudders so we've got one rudder out of action this one's in action and josh is trying to fix a temporary kind of splint Join the bolt and the pipe. Oh crap, that's not wide enough. So trying to hook uh, an, a stay, an old stay, and uh, bolt them and fix the fix this puppy onto a bolt that is about this size, but I've just found out it's a little bit bigger, but I'll be able to work with that I think. At the moment we only have uh, the one rudder working, we've got this rudder on the side locked off, really not a good situation to be in when you've got 17 days of hand steering in front of you. I think we've fixed the problem which I'm pretty stoked about. At least I've fixed our rudder problem. I've disconnected the main bolt there and I'll show you what we've done at top. Thanks Bella. You're welcome. Uh, we've got permanent cramp though. A little bit squishy in there hey? Oh, can't get my head down. Kind of like oh. a cat door. Oh man. Oh. Uh, you know, a lot of people say boating's for older people, but you don't want to be much older than me because 
This stuff is hard. Imagine if you were like 70 or something. Ugh. Mind you, 70 year olds. They're pretty hardcore. Okay. Let's do this. Can you get that Lucy light, Bella? Yeah. And, uh, oh, so sweet. Alright. Let me show you what we've done. I'm really pumped if this works. Pump jazz, I think it's working. Think so it now is. we've got both the steering wheels Turning. moving at the same time, which eliminates our worst fear. And that was like one of the rudders breaking, breaking because uh, all of the pressure was on one rudder. Uh, jazz, show them what you've done. Okay, so in here, that bolt there was broken off, completely sheared through. Uh, we have managed to unthread unthread the broken bit, get it out, and then we've managed to re-thread it in and make each side a little bit shorter. Show you the broken bit. Managed to get out the broken bit. This is the broken bit. That's the broken bit there. That was inside that post. Uh, so we managed to get it out by grinding with the grinder the slot and uh, then unscrewing it. And so the, this is the weakness in the system now. So essentially we've, we've pulled the bolt through this far at each end. And so our bolt that was in that main casing is just a little bit smaller. But this is a German made boat. It should be over engineered, right? And so let's hope that that's okay. Now we just have to reconnect the autopilot and we should be good to go. Yes. Josh is uh, reconnecting the autopilot. Naomi's been doing an amazing job steering by hand for over an hour while we do this. Uh, I need different allergy. Uh, different I'm trying to reconnect the autopilot. Okay, moment of truth, here we go. Is the autopilot gonna work? Is it working? Um, um, guys. Yeah. Do you need to put it in the right place? You need to put it in the right place. You need to put it in the right place. You need to put it in the right place. You need to put it in the right place. You need to put it in the right place. You need to put it in the right place. You need to put it in the right place. You need to put it in the right place. It's been like two hours. No, more than that. Maybe three. It was twelve. It's oh, it's four o'clock. It's been four hours of hell, right? Damn, I can't believe we got it. That's going. This bar joins the two rudders. That was the bar that was broken. Okay, honey. And it's working. Right. Um, do you want to? Um clean up the tools because guess what the, the kids did they blocked the sink with instant noodles and so I gotta fix the sink now as well but if you could clean up the tools and uh, let's unblock the sink and then victory cigar I reckon because I don't have to hand steer for 17 days <laughs> what you making sushi we're finished making sushi so it's mahi, freshly caught this morning. It was a little one, so we thought that would be yeah. the best thing to do with it, right? It's battered and deep fried with a bit of avocado, cream cheese, sweet chili, and rice. Yeah. This is what you do when you got time to kill on passage. Being on passage is like going camping by the ocean. You know, you just you got all the time in the world to but you do can't like swim. little jobs. <laughs> hey, uh, the autopilot's working really well uh, so far. Fingers crossed. This was the next day, and um, yesterday we did, uh, from noon to noon, we did 170 miles, which is our best time ever, right? Yeah. This time, uh, this time noon to noon, we did 150, but we had all that autopilot trouble, and the winds dropped a wee bit. Uh, winds coming behind us, we're thinking about putting out Jenny. But after yesterday's drama, we don't really want to yeah. do that. Uh, we don't want more drama, do the we? The nerves get frazzled, eh? Yeah. What else have you been doing? What's hiding under that bowl there? Uh, this is... 
dog grooming kit under here with a lot of hair, which is very hygienic next to our food. Just so we're in it. And because we've got time on my hands, I'm clipping Coco by hand with finesse. With rather scissors. Than using the clippers. Because <laughs> he's got time, right? Oh, that's so cute. Oh, And this is our first bag of rubbish. Oh, well, that's pretty good. Okay. Cat, how do we do that? Well, I want to know how we do that. Everything that is like food scraps goes overboard. All the toilet paper is going overboard. The recycling, so cans, plastic, cardboard, is uh, getting separated into bags in my laundry to be recycled when we arrive in French Polynesia. So the only stuff that ends up in here really is a little bit of. Um, anything kind of fo like foil or little plastic things that probably can't be recycled. And people who don't know boats too much are stuck on the toilet paper going overboard. First of all, it's environmentally friendly toilet paper, but second of all, why don't we put toilet paper down the toilet? Well, uh, it will block our toilets. But most, I mean, some people flush their toilet paper, right? But, but it's just paper. It's just paper. So it's okay, I think, for that to go in the ocean. Especially on a long passage like this, obviously three weeks at sea, we can't have lots and lots of rubbish. We usually put our paper in. No, but I was a lesson on boat toilets. You don't flush toilet paper. None of our friends do. And the no. friends that do, it's the odd person, and they end up having to unblock toilets all the time, right? Not a fun job. We just hooked the biggest mahi yet on this passage, and I think we're pretty good, like good you know, amount of chance. This is number nine. In. Number nine. If we land him. If we land him. Only three have been uh, keepers and far as eatable. No, no. No, they've been eatable, just, just quite had, small. We had plenty of fish on So we didn't keep the little ones. But this guy's a keeper. Well, we've eaten most of our fish, so I'm going to keep this one if we can land it. I think it's you that's tiring out, not the fish, Josh. Woo! Woo! We landed it! Who's a good one? I think one? it's dead. You think it's dead? No, I don't think like it's dead. It didn't even no, it's just mm. very tight. Okay. Stop there. Stop. Get me. Oh, woo! We can eat you! Get me the knife. Murdering that fish. Oh, look at it flat. Poke it in the brain. He's not getting away now. They don't dream I was weak. I'm gonna reach it. More than it reaches. We can, but only if we've got a win. There is nothing better than die. Do we care of what we've got in day? I need a time to see the beautiful world. Real stormy, big seas today. Just had a wave break inside, which sucks. All the salt water coming in, which nobody likes. Had a bit of a clean up. Uh, school started again, and uh, so our sea the seas are maybe three, four meters, getting 30 knots gusts when a squall comes through. It's really difficult. The autopilot's really struggling. Um, one of our friends that we're sailing with, they've uh, they lost their van, which holds their boom down. They lost uh, their batteries. Uh, it's really an emergency situation for them, and so we're going to a waypoint that they have. Uh, that we've suggested, um, they're still sailing okay under a jury rig, and um, that's not a good situation. This is going to be the worst that the wind gets, hopefully. And uh, I just, when a squall comes through, we've just got to jump on the helm. And uh, so we've got one reef in our main, and our foresail is heavily reefed, our Genoa. And we might have to put another reef in the main and we'll see how we go. Good fun.
We just passed the halfway mark. That means we have only 1,500 miles to go. Pretty exciting. Uh, today is really hard though. Very stormy, very squally. We've got full reefs in the main and full reefs in the Genoa now. Um, our friends on Babelfish, they're having um, problems with charging their batteries. We're trying to like rendezvous with them so they can follow us in because they might lose power altogether, which means they're going to not have any charts, which really lose, sucks for them. They lose their GPS. So lose their GPS, lose their autopilot. So navigating blind, steer. right? They got a hand steer. Um, it's only two of them on there. No fridges, no radio. Pretty exhausting. And our friends Kamori behind us, they've, um, they've got salt water coming in, getting into their villages and into their Drinking fresh water. water. It kind of sucks, they're trying to figure out why that's happening. Our friends Wiz up ahead of us, they had a problem with their water maker, they were going to run out of water, but um, their captain managed to fix it using a peanut butter lid and some fiberglass. Go Daryl, that was awesome. So yeah, ocean passages, are not without their issues. Don't forget our good friends Bo, that has been travelling with us for months now. Yes, Bo had to turn back on the first day because they had oil in their coolant and they weren't confident to keep going with a serious motor problem. So they've been stuck back in the Galapagos waiting for parts. They've made them pay the fees all over again. Super sucky. So yeah, it's just a bit craziness. It's really craziness. And we also had that thing with our Rudders not almost not working. Thankfully, we managed to fix that, and um, so far so good. Got to look after your boat, eh? Yeah. Well, I mean, our generator's not working, but thankfully, our um, alternator from our motor can still charge our batteries. We do have a coolant leak in our engine at the moment, but we can manage that by topping it up. It's not too bad. We're going to get that sorted when we can get close to a mechanic. Alrighty, we are halfway today. Woo! Decided to celebrate. Yes. Woo! A bit of champagne. From Spain. From Spain. Oh, what do they call it? Ca ca Cava. 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 Ah, and we've got the storm for like two days where everything is literally battened down. We're not going to get really drunk or anything, but there's not really much more we can do. Just going to hunker down inside uh, and uh, see it out. Well, the weather has passed, still got a bit of a sea and uh, the wind is still here, we're going wing on wing and today is Bella's birthday! Woo! Bella! Happy birthday! What did you want for your birthday lunch, Bella? Um, attempting to make pies, just like in Steak New Zealand. and cheese pie! So what have we done, baby? This is a special gluten-free pie uh, base that we found in the supermarket in Panama and we've mixed it up, it's chilled for an hour. Josh has made this beautiful steak stew to go in here. They're steak and cheese pies, just like at home. You can smell it though. 14th birthday. 14! Yes. Ooh. Keep on working on your dreams. Over the next couple of months. 
French Polynesia, three major island groups. We're going to be going to all three of them um, over the next month or so. And uh, you stay tuned on Sailing Nika. If this is the first time you've seen us, make sure you subscribe. We're taking you to some really cool spots. You're going to love it.